Hello there and welcome to Level Update. For October 14, 2025, the latest reading from Lake Powell shows the reservoir standing at 3,544.63 feet, according to data from the Bureau of Reclamation. This means that Powell is currently 155.37 feet below its full pool elevation of 3,700 feet. While that may sound low, the story behind this number is far more interesting, because for the first time in weeks, Lake Powell's level has begun to rise again, defying the steady decline we've seen since early summer. To put it simply, the lake has increased by 0.6 feet from its recent low point, marking the first positive movement since late September. That might seem small, just about 7 inches, but for a reservoir the size of Lake Powell, that uptick represents millions of gallons of additional water stored. This marks a surprising and encouraging sign as we move deeper into the 2026 water year. Now, let's unpack the data in more detail. At this elevation, Lake Powell holds approximately 2.19 trillion gallons of water, or just over 27.7% of its total capacity. That means that while the reservoir remains far from full, it's still maintaining a sizable water volume that continues to support power generation at Glen Canyon Dam and downstream flow requirements into Lake Mead. The inflow and outflow data tell an even more intriguing story. For the new water year 2026, which began on October 1st, total inflows have reached 207,777 acre-feet. That's already 87% of the average for this time of year, and it's only mid-October. Meanwhile, total outflows stand at 204,022 acre-feet, meaning inflows have slightly exceeded releases, the main reason behind the small but notable increase in elevation over the past few days. This is precisely the kind of balance shift hydrologists watch for, because it signals the transition between the dry and replenishing periods. Looking at the chart for the past 12 days, we see the lake level had been dropping gradually through early October, from about 3544.55 feet down to 3544.0 by October 9th. Then the trend reversed sharply. Over just four days, Powell climbed back up by more than half a foot, reaching 3544.63 as of October 13th. This bounce aligns with short-term increases in upstream inflows from the Colorado and San Juan rivers, which recently spiked above 149% of their normal October averages. This is significant because October is typically a quiet month for inflows. It's neither the snowmelt season nor the heavy monsoon period, so a small increase like this in mid-October is somewhat unexpected. It shows that upper basin reservoirs, currently at about 68.6% of capacity, are still contributing meaningful water to Powell as they balance their own storage levels. Zooming out to the 12-month chart, the broader trend reveals the lake's long descent from the high levels reached in July of 2024. Last fall, the elevation was about 3577 feet, meaning Lake Powell is down 32.6 feet compared to one year ago. That's a substantial decline, roughly the height of a three-story building, representing billions of gallons over the course of the year. Yet even with that loss, the latest movement offers a hint that the downward slide might finally be easing. During the 2025 summer season, Lake Powell's level dropped steadily due to high releases from Glen Canyon Dam to meet downstream water obligations and electricity demands. From May through September, the reservoir fell nearly 20 feet as outflows exceeded inflows. By early October, the situation stabilized and the inflows began catching up. That's exactly what we're seeing now, a slight recovery as the system begins to recharge. One of the key details to note here is the depth of water at the dam, which is currently 412.6 feet. That's deep enough to maintain hydropower generation at Glen Canyon Dam, which typically requires at least 350 feet of water depth to operate safely. So despite the long-term decline, operations remain stable and the dam continues to generate electricity for millions across the southwest. 
Another subtle but important point comes from the inflow comparison with the previous year. For the 2026 water year so far, inflows are running at 147.5% of last year's pace. That's a strong start, and it suggests that the system may be in better shape entering this water year than it was at the same point in 2024. If that trend holds, we could see Lake Powell stabilizing through the fall and possibly rising modestly through the early winter months before the major snowmelt begins next spring. So, what caused this short-term increase? The data and river gauges point towards localized precipitation events and controlled upstream releases from smaller reservoirs that feed into the Colorado River system. The total precipitation in the region, measured at 225% of average, indicates that runoff and soil moisture conditions have improved, helping boost the flows even without major rainstorms directly over Powell itself. If we examine the inflow curve more closely, it's clear that while we're still far below what would be needed for full recovery, the small surpluses in inflow versus release are making a difference. Each day that inflows exceed releases, even by a small margin, helps rebuild storage capacity. For viewers tracking this over time, this moment is a good reminder that Lake Powell's water story is not a straight line. It's a constant balancing act between what nature provides, what upstream reservoirs release, and what downstream states require. A single week of gain doesn't erase the long-term decline, but it does signal resilience in the system. Looking ahead, hydrologists expect the lake to fluctuate slightly through the rest of October. With the fall inflow pattern continuing, it's possible Powell may maintain or even gain another few tenths of a foot before the winter drawdown begins. That may not sound like much, but these small seasonal plateaus are often the early indicators of stabilization before the spring snowmelt surge months later. In simple terms, Lake Powell's situation today is cautiously encouraging. It's still low, still far below historic norms, but it's moving in the right direction for the first time in several months. And that's news worth paying attention to. As of now, Lake Powell remains at 27.7% of full capacity, yet that percentage could inch upward if inflows continue to outpace releases over the coming weeks. Even a half-foot rise translates to roughly 250,000 acre-feet of additional stored water, enough to supply hundreds of thousands of homes for a year. The surprise increase of October 2025 is a reminder that even within a challenging water system, there are moments of positive movement. The combination of higher inflows, controlled releases, and improved upstream conditions has given Powell a brief but meaningful lift. It's a sign that the reservoir still has some capacity to rebound when conditions align. As we continue to monitor this trend, it'll be important to see whether these inflow surpluses persist. If they do, Lake Powell could hold steady or even rise slightly through the winter, setting up a stronger base for next year's runoff season. Lake Powell's story is one of constant change, shaped by inflows, releases, and timing. And while today's numbers show that the reservoir remains well below full, the recent increase gives a rare bit of good news. The lake is finally moving up again, and that's something worth watching closely as the new water year unfolds. Stay tuned here for continuing updates on Lake Powell's daily levels, trends, and milestones, and the subtle shifts that can mean a lot for the Southwest's water future.